and today I'm continuing my topic of production style sewing. This time it's going to be on a domestic machine, a home machine, that doesn't have any of the automatics. So automatic knee lift, automatic thread cut, they're not on this. This is a 1990s Bernina basic machine, straight stitch zigzag. This is your reverse lever. So we still have the same pattern. We have two straps. We have an outside of the bag and the inside of the bag. And I'm sewing today with a size 16 needle and tech um, 40, tech 60 thread. The boxes have been cut out of the bottom of the bag and the top of the bag have been notched. So I know where to put the straps. I'm gonna start with the top bag. One of the bags, doesn't matter which one. Sew the straps on. So without needle positioning, that's where the needle stops. You have to stop the needle with the take-up lever at the top every time. Okay. To increase on productivity time, you use your nippers and you don't set them down. Take up lever up. Because you can have the needle up, but the take-up lever somewhere in the middle. That finishes tying the knot. Okay. Go to the other side. Do the same thing with the strap. Okay. So the take-up lever finished tying the knot. You can pull the work out and snip your threads. Find your nip over here. Without disturbing this, we're set up for our next step of laying the right sides of the two bags together, and we're going to sew across the top of the one bag, leaving an opening between the straps. Okay. half an inch seam allowance. I back stitch at this opening because then I don't have to worry about the threads coming undone. Okay, there's always two snips whenever you're sewing. The beginning the bidding seam and the end of the seam. We're stopping about three quarters of an inch away from where the strap is. Start this. My hands didn't line up there that well because these two pieces of fabric were not cut exactly the same. And they're supposed to be. This one we're just going to sew all the way across the end. And a little note on back tacking, you only need to back tack two stitches, one to two stitches. It ties a knot so that the thread can't fall apart. You don't need to back tack for a half an inch or three quarters of an inch. You're taking the work, you're matching up the ends here that need to match up. Fingers on top, thumb on the bottom. Your right hand's holding the tension on that while your left hand's guiding the fabric in the machine. You've got the nippers in your hand. You can use them like an awl if you need to push anything along. Take the lever up. Stopping with the take-up lever up prevents any unthreading of the needle. Bird nesting on the back is prevented by holding on to your threads. has to do with the escapement of the machine if you get a lot of birds nesting. The escapement of the thread path. Lining up these side seams here, now we're sewing one side seam of the outside of the bag or the inside of the bag and the other side seam. Where these cross here, we're going to stop with the needle down. Where these cross, we're going to line those seams right up on top of each other, flipping the top seam allowance 
towards the machine, the bottom seam allowance away from the machine. That causes the machine, the pressure of the presser foot, to push those two seams right on top of each other, forming a pinpoint intersection. Stop your needle down, line up your neck section. Thumb on bottom, fingers on top. Mm. Take a lever up, snip the beginning or the end of the seam and the beginning of the seam. Keep your work neat. Turn it around, do the same thing to this bag, this side seam, lining up your ends, sewing a few inches, needle down. Sometimes you can control it with the foot control. Line these two seams up on top of each other, forcing, not forcing. Placing the top seam allowance toward the machine, the bottom seam allowance away from the machine, using your left hand guide fabric. This is as fast as this machine sews. We've just crossed that intersection. Needle down. We're going to come up to this intersection down here. Line those up, fingers on top, thumb on bottom. Straighten our edges out here. So on to the other end. Well, and that's not where the reverse is on this machine. Two snips. Now we're gonna take this end pocket here to open it up. Needle down. I'm going to follow our seam down to the other box on the same side seam of the lining or the outside of the bag, whatever way. Because it's reversible, it's your choice. So that seam allowance was up, this seam allowance is up. There's a big long chain here of fabric, making a big horseshoe. I'm gonna sew off of that end onto the end of this one. Back back in. to stop with the needle down. You can adjust your fabric. You always want the needle down so that things don't get out of place. That's your pin, if you will. Take up levers up. Take the work out. Snip both ends. Now we're going to take that seam, fold it right on top of each other because we have a little chain there, and join those two seam allowances. This causes the lining not to pull out. end. Seam allowance up, opening that seam allowance up. Come in here. See, the knee lift acts like a third hand for you many other times when you need to raise or lower the presser foot. Follow the seam down to the other box end. This is to ensure that you don't tangle it or get tied up in straps or anything. So right off of that one onto this one at half an inch. Stop with the needle down. And I'm just doing that by tapping my foot on the pedal. Just give it a little juice to make a half cycle of stitch. If you can't do that, then use your hand wheel. Same difference. Snip. Snip. 
They're chained together and fold them on top of each other. Stitch your seam allowances together. Now we've successfully made a ball. We're going to turn the ball right side out through the opening that we have left. Okay. The last thing we have to do is stitch the seam between these two fabrics, fold it back on itself, and I'm just kind of softening that seam up a little bit so that it'll fold back on itself easier. Okay, so with the opening towards the back of the machine, we're going to reach in here and find the side seam. The two fabrics join here, and the two side seams of the back join there. We're going to open that side seam up to distribute the seam allowance bulk to either side and then fold it back on itself. Top stitching close to the edge, keeping the hole to the back, the opening towards the back of the machine, because we'll have another side seam to do the exact same stitching. Um, and flipping up the seam allowance. Tap the foot, lower the needle. Sometimes rubber gloves aid this. Kind of rolling out. Lotion hands, rolling that out to a knife edge, stitching an eighth of an inch from that edge. Stopping with the needle down. I've come to this other side seam, I can feel that bulk to reach in there, flip that out, flip that side seam so that I can see the colors of the fabric, fold it back on top of each other. Tap the foot to get that needle to come down, or turn the hand wheel. On these, you're just going to take your half an inch seam allowances, butt them up to each other, it's stitching close to the edge. Okay. It wants to creep, more seam allowance wants to creep in there than a half an inch. Don't let it. And then because these bags weren't cut exactly even, and I tried to ease that in there on that one side. We're going to have to ease that in on this side. That's why if you don't leave that gap that happened on my one seam, when you're doing charity bags, you wind up having to ease it in somewhere in this closing, which is not my ideal way of doing this. Threads at the beginning. And we're back to where we Take a lever up, we can remove the work. And our bag is finished. I hope this helped you. Thank you for watching.